All right, so in this video, I'm going to talk about um, job market signaling uh, problem. It's going to be a very simple version of uh, Spen's uh, job market signaling model. Uh, well, don't forget, this is an intermediate microeconomics two course. So um, the, 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 the way I deal with the signaling problem or signaling model is the simplest possible way. If you are looking for a more uh, a complicated treatment uh, or more detailed treatment of job market signaling problems, um, well, you should take more uh, advanced courses uh, like the game theory. So in this very simple model, uh, the Spence idea is the following. So in, in this video, I'm going to talk about the model and how the signaling, I mean, what Spence was trying to uh, motivate as uh, education as a signaling. And then uh, in the next videos, I will talk about the separating and pooling equilibrium and solve this particular problem. All right, well, so for economists, education is valuable for, well, many reasons, but two main reasons. One, the education we believe uh, increases a, a person's uh, human capital or productivity. As you know, and as you learn more and more sophisticated information, knowledge, you will be able to uh, uh, fulfill more complicated uh, tasks. And so it, it, it increases your skill in many dimensions, the education, at least in theory. I don't know how things go in practice. I hope it, it does improve your um, uh, productivity. And so more education means uh, more productive workers. Think about the productivity of a worker as for, percent, uh, for a given amount of time, the worker can complete uh, a more complicated tasks. And hence, the firms who hire more productive workers can actually make more profit out of one unit of hour that the worker worked. All right. So uh, the usual assumption is that the high productive workers uh, usually receive higher wages because the firms can make more profit. They can raise more profit out of more productive workers. So think about more productive workers as high technology and low, quali or low productive workers as low technology. So if you have a higher technology, it's easier to produce whatever you're producing. Obviously, this assumption is not true for all sectors in, in all you know, markets, but this is kind of the usual assumption that we go with uh, for this particular problem, at least. So uh, let me go back to uh, why education is important. As I said, for two reasons. One, it increases your uh, labor productivity, and hence, as a result of this, you make more money. Uh, your wage will be higher. But what Spence um, argues is, well, despite the fact that education increases your worker product, labor productivity, forget about this. I mean, let's assume education has no benefit to you in terms of your productivity. Education is still valuable, he says, because the agents, the workers can actually signal their productivity levels using the education. All right, so let me repeat. Although education is valuable to increase your labor productivity, even if education does not contribute to your labor productivity, Spence argues that education is still valuable because in the job market, a worker can signal his productivity by acquiring more advanced uh, level of education. All right, so the education has uh, also a signaling value. Okay, so that's sort of his main contribution. Uh, well, why is that so? Why education has a signaling value? Well, the problem arises because there is an asymmetric information in the job market. So let's say you're a worker, you apply to a new job. I mean, hopefully and eventually you all will be. What happens is that you have a CV. Well, some firms look for transcripts, some firms look for recommendation letters. And then you go to interview stage and some companies interview you several times, five, six, sometimes 10, many times. It's like, oh God, I mean, what are you trying to learn? 
Well, the problem is the firms are trying to understand, one, if you're a good fit for the company, and two, well, by that they mean actually, are you going to be productive in this company? Well, if you're going to be productive, well, then I'm willing to, the firm is willing to pay you a high wage. If you're not productive, well, the firm is not going to give you a high wage or the firm is not going to hire you at the first place. So they want to know uh, the wor worker. Uh, before hiring the worker. They want to know the level, the quality or the productivity of the worker. And the problem is that, uh, unfortunately, you can't just say, oh, I'm a high productive guy, I'm, I'm, I'm brilliant, I'm, I'm superb. Well, I mean, that might be a lie, right? There is no credible way of, you know, talk is a cheap, um, so it has no meaning. But the education isn't cheap. And so by acquiring education, you signal, you talk to the workers, uh, the, uh, the firms, and, and that, that talk is not a cheap talk because the education is costly. How so? Well, first of all, you know, a lot of people pay thousands of dollars uh, for acquiring a college education. But aside from that, even if it is free, well, you spend hours of working, doing homework, studying for exams, studying for uh, projects. So you basically spend at least four years for college education. And some people go even further, a master's, a PhD, etc. So this has a lot of mental cost, right? It's hard to measure, obviously, but it's very, very costly to get a higher and higher education levels. On top of that, um, the education also has an opportunity cost. Uh, well, I mean, rather than acquiring this costly education, you can, you may just go and, and flip burger and then make money by attending a college for four years or five years, whatever. You are basically uh, let go some money that you could make. Uh, and so this is the opportunity cost of education. So the bottom line is education is costly and hence it must be a signaling value. But the thing is the education, uh, the signaling value of education is going to play an important role if what we call, um, oh, I'm, I'm terrible with uh, names. Uh, uh, I forgot the, 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 the terminology. If I remember, I'll, I'll, I'll say it. Um, what matters is, not what matters, I'm sorry, the, 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 the signaling value of the education will be realized if education is more costly for the low productivity worker. All right, so let me state this. Um, the signaling value of education will work uh, will will be realized will be realized if low productivity workers cost of education is higher than the high productivity workers cost okay so um, what was the terminology for this oh, um, I forgot um, it's going to come up, I know, but uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, the, here the idea is the following. So assume that there's a high productivity guy and a low productivity guy. Uh, uh, my favorite uh, TV show, uh, uh, The Big Bang Theory. Um, I don't know if you watched that, but if you didn't, you should. So there's a, a character called Sheldon, uh, the genius. And then another character, uh, a Penny, um, uh, a lovely waitress in uh, a cheesecake factory. So you can think of uh, Sheldon versus Penny. So Sheldon is the high productivity guy uh, in some sense when it comes to science, at least. And the Penny is the low productivity uh, person, again, when it comes to science related uh, work. Uh, well, what happens is that here the assumption is that the Sheldon, the high productivity guys, uh, the cost of education is going to be lower. Well, why is that? Well, well, Sheldon is genius, all right? Studying, uh, you know, doing homeworks, um, you know, doing a master's or PhD is a piece of cake for him. He doesn't really suffer the education as much as Penny does, all right? For Penny, it's really big pain in the neck 
to go through all these exams, the homeworks, etc. So education is more costly for uh, Penny than Sheldon. Also, Sheldon cannot go. You know, if she if he if he doesn't continue on education, what is he gonna do? Is he gonna flip burger? Is he gonna go and 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 work in some construction business? No way. So the the, the likelihood that Sheldon could have made a lot of money outside of education or the science arena is almost zero. On the other hand, Penny could actually do lots of other things, right? She could be waitress, she could be, I don't know, a sales representative in some company. So she is actually talented in many other dimensions. And so rather than getting an education, she could actually go outside work and make money. And so the education also has a lot of opportunity cost for Penny. So the bottom line is at least the assumption is that the, 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 the high productivity guy has a lower cost of education than the low productivity guy. All right. So if this assumption is true and under those circumstances, the signaling value of the education will be realized. Otherwise, the education is not going to have any signaling value. OK. Um, so. Uh, I still didn't remember, I can't remember the, 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 the terminology that sort of sums up this condition. Uh, I am sometimes horrible with uh, names. Anyway, so that was uh, the Spence uh, job market, sort of in a nutshell, that was the uh, Spence uh, job market signaling uh, model framework. And here is the specific question and specific model that I'm going to work on. Uh, and, and sort of details are following in the next videos. So here in this example, I have one worker and many firms. So the, 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 there are many firms and so the, the, uh, the, uh, the firms are competitive, all right? They will always uh, offer, the, uh, uh, offer the expected uh, productivity as the wage, all right? So that's an assumption. So, we don't really need to have one worker. We could have 100 workers. A ratio of them have high quality. Ratio of them have low quality. By the way, I'm sorry for calling it high, low quality. I mean high productivity and low productivity. All right. So I'm going to stick to one worker example. It's just that the worker could be high productivity or low productivity with some certain probability. And in this example, I think it's 50-50. So the worker is high productivity with half a probability and low productivity with half, pro uh, half probability. Well, obviously, we can think of another model where we have high pro productivity, medium productivity, low productivity. Fine. The idea is going to be the same. All right. So the simplest model, we have two types. OK. So the worker is either high productivity and low productivity. As I said, they're equally likely. Well, the high productivity guy's value for the firm is uh, $15 per hour. So if you as a firm hire, um, hire uh, a high productivity worker, you know that as a firm, you're going to make $15 per hour revenue from this worker. All right. Think it that way. And the low productivity worker, uh, the value for the firm is $10 per hour. So he's less valuable. Okay. Well, that's it um, regarding the productivities. Well, the utility of the firms or the profit of the firms is very simple. Well, the firms are going to, um, you know, get some revenue from the productivity of the worker. So if it is a high productivity worker, the firm is going to make revenue of $15 per hour. If it is low productivity, they're going to make $10, hours per, $10 per hour. And then minus the wage that they're going to pay. But as I said, because the firms are going to be competitive, uh, the market wage is going to be exactly equal to the productivity of the worker so that the firms make zero economic profit. All right. Well, the firm's profit will be zero if they don't hire the worker. Okay. Well, what about the worker? Well, the worker's utility is simple, wage minus the cost of education. So the more wage or the higher wage the worker gets, the higher the utility he will have. All right. And the education is costly. And so we subtract that cost of education. All right. So very simple utility, wage minus cost of education. 
Well, obviously, um, if you don't get any education, the assumption is that you get zero cost of education. And if you're not hired, that means you're going to get zero wage. So zero education, I'm sorry, if you're not hired and if you don't get any education, so your utility will be zero. So zero is the minimum level of utility the consumer, the, the worker can guarantee. So we can't expect this worker uh, spend more money on his education than his, uh, uh, his, his wage, all right? Because in that case, he's going to make negative utility, which doesn't make sense. It's not rational. All right. Well, as I said, education is costly. And so say there is a college and the college offers a four-year program and attending the program is costly. But the thing is, the high type is going to suffer less than the low type. And here the costs are uh, stated in terms of per hour uh, value. So if you are a, a high type worker, well, the cost of education, think it that way, is $1 per hour. So if, you're, if your wage, say, $100 per hour, and if you get an education, well, you're going to subtract a dollar. All right. So your, your net benefit is going to be 100 minus one. So $99. All right. However, if you're low type, well, again, your wage minus $6. So you're going to subtract $6 because that's going to be the cost of education. As I said, the cost of education in this problem is represented as per hour uh, wage uh, 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 scale. Okay. So, as I said, um, uh, the low type suffers more. So, the cost of education for low type is higher than the cost of education of high type. So, here, obviously, the uh, efficient outcome is when there is no asymmetric information. I mean, when the information is symmetric. So, when you apply to a job, um, let's suppose the firm uh, all observes your uh, productivity immediately. I don't know how that happens, but suppose it's a world where that's the case. Well, in this instance, what's going to happen is that if you're a high productivity guy, your wage is going to be WH, which is going to be $15 per hour. And again, the reason is that there are many firms and so the market is competitive. All the firms are going to offer the workers their uh, productivity. So if you're high type and that's obvious, it's known to the firms, well, then they're going to pay you accordingly, which means $15 per hour. If you're low type, however, uh, the firms are going to offer you not $15. They're going to offer you 10 hours without any education. All right, by the way. So without any education, this is how much the workers are going to be paid per hour. All right. And by the way, both the high type and the low type workers will accept those uh, because the cost of education is zero. They're getting a positive wage and so beautiful. But the problem, so there's nothing interesting here. The problem, the interesting cases arise when there is an asymmetric information. So the firms cannot observe your productivity. However, firms can observe your education level. I mean, uh, remember, this is a, a, a college degree, so you can present your diploma to the firm and you can say, hey, you know what? I suffered some cost. Obviously, the firm doesn't know your cost, whether you paid one dollar or six dollars, but the firm knows that you got the diploma. So that means you have the education. All right. So once again, the firms cannot distinguish the type of the worker, but they can uh, observe whether you got the education or not. So this is the asymmetric information. As a worker, you know your productivity, but the firm doesn't. So then the question is, by using the education, can we find an equilibrium of this? This is a game, but I'm not going into the details of this game. So I'm just analyzing it as a model. So uh, can, can we sustain an equilibrium where high type gets the education and low type doesn't get the education, which we are going to call separating equilibrium. And then we're going to look at pooling equilibrium. So I will, uh, in the next video, talk about these pooling versus separating equilibria in detail. So let me cut here. But I hope the model and what we are trying to do is clear. All right.